Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel Material Welding offering free training in welding and NUT areas. If this is the first time you are viewing our learning videos, I want to say thank you very much for viewing our free learning videos and supporting us. And special thanks to our subscribers. As you will observe and learn, please note that each video takes so much time and effort for the preparation. Each of our training videos is custom prepared to provide you best learning based on theory and practical approach. We have so much to offer via these free videos, so please subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you again. Keep learning and sharing. Today's topic is, Gas Tungsten Arc Welding or Teague Welding. The objectives of today training are, what is Tigorgi TW? Understand the process principle and equipment. Understand different parts of the process and equipment. Understand the polarity and Teague welding. Understand the functions of the tungsten electrode, polarity, and shielding gases. Know how the electrode classification system work. Know the advantages, limitations, and application of the Teague welding. The gas tungsten arc welding GTW, process is sometimes referred to as Teague or Heli arc. The term Teague is short for tungsten inert gas welding, and the much older term a Heli arc was used because helium was the first gas used for the process. The aircraft industry developed the GTW process for welding magnesium during the late 1930s. It is also called GTW, which means gas tungsten arc welding. To use this process, an arc is established between a non-consumable tungsten electrode and the base metal, which is called the workpiece. Under the correct welding conditions, the electrode does not melt, although the work does it in the spot where the arc impacts its surface and produces a molten weld pool. The filler metal is a thin wire that is fed directly into the molten weld pool where it melts. Since hot tungsten is sensitive to oxygen contamination, a good inert shielding gas is required to keep the air away from the hot tungsten and molten weld metal. The inert gas provides the needed arc characteristic sand. Protects the molten weld pool. Because fluxes are not used, the welds produced are sound, free of slags, and as corrosion resistant as the parent metal. Here in this picture, the Teague welding process setup is shown. A visual image on right shows the actual look of the components. Manual gas tungsten arc welding is often considered the most difficult of all the welding processes commonly used in the industry. Because the welder must maintain a short arc length, great care and skill are required to prevent contact between the electrode and the workpiece. Hand while manipulating the welding torch in the other hand. Similar to torch welding, Teague normally requires two hands. Since most applications require that the welder manually feed a filler metal into the weld area with one hand and another hand to hold the torch. In Teague welding, there are two methods of starting the arc. Scratch method here the electrode is scratched on the workpiece to start the arc and then moved away to the required dark length. This method has a high risk of tungsten contamination and needs high welder skills. Using high frequency unit, here a high voltage, high frequency current provides a path for the welding current. This process required fewer operator skills and having less risk of electrode contamination. Teague welding application Teague is most commonly used to weld thin sections of stainless steel and non-ferrous metals such as aluminum, magnesium, and copper alloys. The process grants the operator greater control over the weld than competing processes such as shielded metal arc welding and gas metal arc welding, allowing for stronger, higher quality welds. However, Teague is comparatively more complex and difficult to master, and furthermore, it is significantly slower than most other welding techniques. A related process, plasma arc welding, uses a slightly different welding torch to create a more focused welding arc and as a result, is often automated. Teague welding is classified into three types. 1. Apteague 2. 
DC TIG 3, Pulse TIG. Now let's understand the types of polarity used in TIG welding and their effects on the welding. As shown in the picture, three polarities are can be used in TIG welding. 1. DC in that is direct current electrode negative. 2. DCP that is direct current electrode positive. 3. A C that is alternating current. As we can see here that in DC EN 70% heat is at the workpiece and 30% on the electrode and thus we get deep penetration. Also, less heat on the electrode end helps to increase the life of the tungsten electrode. Similarly, in DC P 30% heat is at the workpiece and 70% on the electrode and thus we get shallow penetration as shown in the picture. Also, High heat on the electrode end decreases the life of the tungsten electrode hence this polarity is rarely used in TIG welding. Third polarity is a C polarity. Here due to the characteristics of the alternating current, total heat is balanced equally on both electrode and workpiece. This polarity gives medium penetration depth. Here in this picture, heat balance among the three types of polarity is shown as we discussed earlier. Take a look and understand the heat balance. A C C polarity, in A, C polarity, heat is equally distributed on both ends. The flow of ions and electrons takes place in both directions as shown in the picture. The change of ions between the electrode and the workpiece provides a cleaning effect and hence A, C polarity is very beneficial for aluminum welding. Here the cleaning action of A, C polarity is illustrated. As a C has both DCP and DCEN cycles, it helps to clean the oxide layer from the material surface and bring the cleaning action. As said earlier, it is very helpful in aluminum welding, where oxide layer temperature is around 2000 degrees centigrade and base metal melting temperature is 750 degrees centigrade only. Thus, it is difficult to weld with direct current. Here a C polarity is very useful and used widely in the industries. Next polarity is direct current electrode negative or called straight polarity. It is used for practically all metals. Here torch is negative and work is connected to positive. Electrons flow from negative to positive work. 70% of heat on the positive side. Heat is distributed into the work. It helps to increase the tungsten electrode life. Provides deep penetration next polarity. Current electrode positive or reverse polarity. Here. The torch is connected to the positive terminal. Work is connected to the negative terminal. Electrons flow from negative to positive. The electrode is on the negative side. Electrons are leaving the work. 70% of heat is on the positive side and more into the electrode. The electrode must be bigger diameter as it needs to withstand high heat. Pulse TIG works by varying the current from a high peak amperage level to a lower background amperage level at regular intervals. Pulse controls also adjust for the number of pulses per second and the percent of time spent at the peak amperage level. Pulsing is used to control heat input and allow for improved weld profile. Let's now understand the equipment in TIG welding. First is the power source which is the most important part. Gas tungsten arc welding uses a constant current power source, meaning that the current and thus the heat remains relatively constant, even if the arc distance and voltage change. This is important because most applications of TIG are manual or semi-automatic, requiring that an operator hold the torch. Maintaining a suitably steady arc distance is difficult if a constant voltage power source is used instead since it can cause dramatic heat variations and make welding more difficult. 
Next is Teague Torch. Teague Torch consists of various components as shown in the picture here. Various types of Teague Torch are also shown here. Next is Shielding Gas. Shielding gases are necessary for Teague to protect the welding area from atmospheric gases such as nitrogen and oxygen, which can cause fusion defects, porosity, and weld metal embrittlement if they come in contact with the electrode, the arc, or the welding metal. The gas also transfers heat from the tungsten electrode to the metal, and it helps start and maintain a stable arc. The characteristics of argon gas are It gives good arc starting It gives good cleaning action It gives good arc stability It gives focused arc cone It gives lower arc voltages The characteristics of helium gas are It gives faster travel speeds it increased penetration but with this gas, difficult arc starting. It gives less cleaning action. It gives less low amp stability. It gives flare dark cone. It gives higher arc voltages. With this gas, we need higher flow rates almost double that argon as helium density is less. Higher cost than argon. The next important part is the tungsten electrode. Since the arc temperature is well above the melting point of the tungsten GTW electrode, why doesn't the electrode melt? Very small amount of electrode does melt and ends up in the weld. The electrode resists melting because tungsten is having highest melting point of all metals 3420 degrees centigrade. Tungsten has high thermal conductivity. Torch collets are designed to remove heat from the electrodes. Here the color coding system used for tungsten electrodes is shown. The most widely used in the WTH2 which is red in color and alloyed with thorium. These charts here show the types of welding current for different types of tungsten electrodes and the recommended electrode current that can be used. The pictures here depict the process for the end preparation for the tungsten electrode before welding. Let's see now the advantages of TIG welding. Weld more kinds of metals and metal alloys such as stainless steel, nickel alloys, titanium, aluminum, copper, brass. Also, we can weld dissimilar metals to each other for example. Copper to brass and stainless steel to mild steel. It gives concentrated dark. It helps to pinpoint control of heat input to the workpiece. It gives narrow heat affected zone. This is where the base metal has undergone a change due to the superheating of the arc and fast cooling rate. No slack, no sparks, spatter or noise. No smoke or fumes. Thank you for watching today video. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet.